Prince is staying at Malia Tsomovo. He asked to be remembered to you. He's promised to raise the question of a medical relief centre at the next provincial assembly. But he doesn't hold out much hope of success. Oh, I am sorry. I always forget this can be of no interest to you. Why shouldn't it be? As a matter of fact, I consider a medical relief centre at Malatsomovo is quite unnecessary. What is necessary? Landscapes? Landscapes are not either. Nothing is. Last week, Anna died in childbirth. If there'd been a medical centre near, she'd still be alive. And I'd have thought that even a landscape painter would have more than a negative opinion on the subject. I assure you, I have very positive opinions on it. All these schools and dispensaries of yours, they're just more links in the chain. That, mm, the peasants are fettered by a great chain and you... Yes? Well, you just add more links to it. What matters? What really matters is not that one Anna died in childbirth, but that all your Annas and Mavras and Pelagayas live like animals, blindly, in terror of death and disease, working from dawn till dusk for a crust of bread, falling ill from overwork, fading and growing old quickly and dying in filth and stench. And the whole horror of it is that not for one moment do they have time to think of their souls or to engage in that search for the truth, which is the one thing that distinguishes men from beasts. You go to them with your schools and dispensaries. Ach, but good heavens, one must do something. And all you're doing is giving them more things to depend on so that they have to work even harder to pay for them. No! No, I won't argue with you. But I'll just say this. We may not be saving humanity. We may be making all sorts of mistakes, but we do what we can. And we're right to do it. That's true, Lida. That's true. No, oh, yes. You do what you can. Yes. But you do the wrong thing! The only way to change their brutish lives is to free them from the necessity for hard physical labor. Give them time to breathe, to think, <laughs> to... Free them from labor? You think that's possible? Certainly! Why not? If everyone, I mean all of us, you and me, your prince, all the landlords and merchants and scientists and artists, if we all agreed to divide between us the labor man has to spend on satisfying his basic physical needs, why we'd each have to work only two or three hours a day? And then, then if we could all get together as a community and devote our free time to science and art and the pursuit of truth, I am convinced that truth would be discovered very quickly and mankind escape from all his agonizing animal fears. Even from the fear of death. Perhaps even from death itself. But you contradict yourself. You talk about science and art and yet you consider elementary education unnecessary. Elementary education, which equips a man to read the signs on public houses and a few wretched maxims and mottos has been available in Russia for a thousand years. And for a thousand years, Russia hasn't changed. What the peasants need is time. Time. And the freedom to develop their minds. Not schools, universities. I see. And you consider medicine unnecessary, too. Do you? A medicine which only seeks to cure diseases and not the causes of those diseases is meaningless. Cure the causes. And physical labor is the principal one. You'll have no diseases left to cure. Really? How fascinating. I refuse to recognize a science which only seeks to heal. Science and art are meaningless unless they aim at universal truths. Tie them down to satisfying daily temporary needs and they just fill our lives with clutter. Our scientists and 
Artists and writers are all hard at work providing us with more and more things to desire. More and more objects we think we can't do without. Enslaving us to things while the search for truth is forgotten. Impossible. A scientist who turns his back on that search only hastens man's degeneration into a dirty, rapacious animal. And the artist? Oh, the artist. The more talented the artist, the more absurd his position is. By providing the animal with something which it thinks it wants, but which it won't for one moment try to learn from. He's only supporting the existing foul, decaying order. I don't choose to do this. I will not do it. I will not work for this animal. Nothing's any use. Let the world go to the devil. Miss Hughes, I think you should leave the room. Yes. These are the charming things people say when they need to justify their indifference. You threaten us with your refusal to work, so clearly you set a high value on it. But I consider the most imperfect library or dispensary far more valuable than any landscape. There is no point in our arguing. But we shall never agree. The prince has changed a lot, Mama. He's much thinner. His doctors insist he go to Vichy. 